Hello and welcome back to OMG The Cloud, running our series on installing and configuring a PFSense virtual machine for your lab infrastructure. We went over a quick overview in the previous video, but now we want to step back and let's actually go through the installation because there's a few things in here that might not be quite what you expect if you're used to deploying VMs. There's a few things that are a little odd here. So first off, go ahead and just get that download going. Grab the, uh, I'm running 2.5.0, which is the latest release in March of 2021. You wanna grab the AMD64 ISO image, grab that from your closest location, pull it down, and then let's go ahead and flip over and start the virtual machine installation. So go ahead and create a new virtual machine. This could look a little different depending on what version of VMware you're running, whether or not you're running vCenter, things like that. So go ahead and get that deployed. Name it something sensible, give it your cluster, give it your backing storage, and the virtual machine hardware compatibility. You want it to be guest OS family other and FreeBSD 12 if you're running 2.5.0. That's what version of FreeBSD is running under the hood. And it can take some pretty lightweight specs. So I'm just giving it a single CPU, one gig of RAM, default hard disk at eight gigs, there's a couple things here we should look at though. There's two network adapters. Um, one of them should be on your LAN so you can access it. And then a second network adapter that's gonna be your inside network where your virtual machines live that you're firewalling off. More importantly, on the newer versions, it's picking up your VMX Net 3 adapter. We wanna roll it back. This is counterintuitive to everything else we do. We always end up blowing away a VM and redoing it because we accidentally put in the wrong virtual adapter. We intentionally want the E1000 adapter. This is going to be what's compatible in that hardware stack. So don't use the VMX Net 3 for these. Um, and that's true for both adapters. You wanna use that E1000. And then we wanna attach the ISO file that we downloaded earlier and go ahead and make sure you check the connect box and then you should be good. You can go ahead and just next through this, let it create the virtual machine. And once it's done creating, we can go ahead and start it up and open up the web console. We're gonna let that installer boot up and the installation is all gonna be defaults. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just skip ahead to the final stages of the installation and we're all done with let the reboot happen. Uh, it's asking if we want to do any last minute system changes. Nope, don't need to do that. Do we want to reboot? Yes, we do. Off we go. Okay, and we're booting back up. Getting some of those baseline services started up. And we're up and running. We can see our WAN interface landed on 192.168.2 network, which I know is my physical LAN, and the inside network, which I've called the OMG network, uh, it picks up by default a 192.168.1.1 slash 24, and it has DHCP enabled on that. So let's set up just a couple more things. First, we wanna get in to our shell, option eight, and we wanna disable the packet filtering for a moment. We talked about this briefly in the overview video, but this is where, since we're coming in on the WAN side in a lab environment, uh, I have no access to it, it's firewalled off. So we're gonna temporarily disable packet filtering, pfctl-d for disable, pf disabled, and now we can hit that interface. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that up. Connection's not private, we know, and we're gonna log in with the default login, which is going to be admin, pfsense. Okay, and it's gonna drop us off at the standard wizard. So we can just hit the pfsense logo to exit out of this. Let's go to interfaces, WAN, Scroll to the very bottom. You wanna uncheck the private and bog on networks. We need to be able to communicate over these networks since we are purely inside. This is not internet facing. So go ahead and hit save, but don't hit apply yet. If you hit apply, it's gonna go ahead and re-enable the packet filtering and we're not quite done yet. So go to firewall, go to rules, go to WAN, and we're gonna add a new firewall rule. So we need to be able to let ourselves in on the WAN side. So we're going to leave these settings at default. Source is any, that's fine. Destination, that's going to be WAN address. Destination port range, we're going to use HTTPS. Give it a description, hit save. 
and now we can hit apply. Additionally, we want to install the VMware tools package. Go to system package manager, available packages, type VM. First one that comes up, open VM tools. Go ahead and install that. And it's successful. I recommend rebooting at this point. And we're able to get back in normally after a reboot. We can just double check to make sure that packet filter is in fact on as we expect. So we go back to eight to get into shell, pfctl-e to enable. And it's gonna tell us PF already enabled. Packet filtering is already enabled. So we are successfully logged in to the web interface from the WAN side and functioning normally. And that's it. We're going to cover some more detailed setup in the next video. Stay tuned for some VLAN configuration, some HA proxy, and some Let's Encrypt auto rotating certificates. Thanks for watching.